Hello everyone, Mike Grempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel blog post. Today we're going to take a look at how to create a list of your worksheet names, how to convert them into hyperlinks, but also make them dynamic so if you change the sheet names, if you add or delete sheets, this list will automatically update and you'll have a nice complete list all the time. So let's see how we can do this in Excel. So here is an example of the result that we want to accomplish. Here I have a list of hyperlinks and each one of those is linked to one of the worksheets that we have here. I have a hidden column here that lists all the sheet names, red, green, blue, black, etc. as you can see down here all the way down to index. I'm going to go ahead and hide that. And now each one of these, say the black company, will take me to the black worksheet. I have a link here that takes me back to index. White will take me here, etc. Now an example, if I'm on the maroon worksheet, I'm going to go ahead and copy that over here. And I'm going to change this to pink. And I'm going to call this the pink company. Now when I go to my index, you'll see now that's been added. I click on that and it will take me there. Also, if I do something like go take from the blue over to the purple company and I go ahead and I delete those, I'll say OK. I go to my index and notice the list has been reduced. So it's a very dynamic list and it automatically creates the hyperlinks to take me to the individual worksheets. So let's see how we're going to do this. So here I'm going to start with two blank areas. One, the links to the sheets and two, the sheet names. I'm going to go ahead and unhide column D here where I have my information. And here are the formulas that we're going to work with. We're going to have a transpose formula that incorporates the get.workbook, the text function, and the now function. We have another formula that's basically an index formula that uses mid and find and rows wrapped in an if error function. And we have another if statement, but basically it's the hyperlink function using indirect here. And we've wrapped that in an if statement and in an if error function. Now notice here there's two important things to note. One item is that this will not work if your sheet names have spaces. So if you need to simulate a space, use an underscore like red underscore name. And also this workbook must be saved as a macro enabled workbook, not just a standard Excel workbook. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go to the formula tab and name manager and you can see I've already created an item here I'll go to edit and you'll see I've called it sheet list and this formula transpose get dot workbook one ampersand t and the now function is what the formula is with the name sheet list and let's walk through this and see what basically this does First of all, get.workbook is an older function in Excel, and what it does, it generates the workbook name and the list of worksheets in a horizontal list. So transpose will then convert that to a vertical list, so we would have them row 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. What we've then done is concatenated that with the T function, which is a text function, and the now function. What T does, if you can see if I type equals T, it checks whether a value is text and returns the text if it is, or returns double quotes, which is a blank, if it's not. Well, what the value of the T function is, is the now function. And equals now returns the current date and time. So if I enter that, I get today's date and time. So what the text function is doing is checking to see if the now function is text. It is not, so it will return 
a blank. But the point is the now function is a volatile function, which means anytime you enter anything, you refresh, you save, you update, etc., it will recalculate, which means that it will always keep recalculating this get.workbook function, so it will regularly update anytime you make any changes. So that's the first step is to create this a uh, name and I again I called it sheet list with that transpose get dot workbook formula so that's step number one so next we need to create the list of sheet names so I'm just gonna take this formula here I'm gonna copy it and I'm just gonna go into cell B2 and I'll paste it and notice it gave me the first sheet name that we have which is red and I'm going to drag this all the way down to say row 29 and notice it indexes or lists all the sheet names that we have red green blue etc all the way down to index now because we have this wrapped in an if error function beyond index since there's no worksheets beyond that would create an error but the if error function just enters a blank so we don't have anything there to worry about so let's take a look and see what this function is doing. It's an index function. So an index function, you have an array, you have a row number, and a column number. Well, a column number is always going to be one with all our formulas here because there's only one column of data. Row number, if you can see, this is row B1, which will generate a one. The next one, row B2, so it'll generate a two, three, four, etc. So all that's doing is saying give me the one in the first row, the second row, the third row, the fourth row, etc. So the key here is how to generate the array. So we're using the mid function. If we look at our mid function, there's the text, which is our sheet list, which is generated by the get.workbook. And then the start number, we're looking for the ending square bracket from the sheet list and adding one character to that and then the number of characters I entered 100 some people will enter 255 as long as you enter a number that's greater than the number of characters in any of your worksheet names you're okay so just enter a large number there and you should be safe so if we take a look at this and I look at text sheet list and I hit F9 to see what happens there you'll see that it generates a list of all the worksheets but it includes the workbook name so you can see we have hyperlink sheet names EB which is my workbook name red and then that same workbook name green workbook name blue etc so that is our list of data and what we want to do is we want to find that second square bracket there which if you follow this along you'll see that's right before the name of the worksheet then we add one to that so that'll now start with the name of the worksheet in this case red or green or blue and then we'll go up to a hundred characters in that most of them are much shorter than in fact they're all much shorter than that but we're safe to put a hundred in there and that will give us the sheet name so I'm going to just escape and go back to our main formula here and collapse this back up but that is how we get the list of sheet names so we use again the mid function which takes the list of the sheet names which include the workbook find that second bracket add one to that which will get us to the first character of the sheet name and then go up to however many characters necessary and then that generates the list and then row one will say give me the one in the first row the second row the third row etc and now we have the list of our sheet names the last step then is to create a list of hyperlinks from that information and we're going to use this formula here. So I'm going to take it, I'm going to highlight that and copy it and I'm going to throw it into cell A2, control V and it gives me the red company and we'll 
explain why that did that in a second. I'm going to copy this down all the way down to row 29. And again, it will only give me the information or the hyperlinks down to the last one before the index. And we'll explain how that works. But right now, if I click on any of these, so I click on the red company, it will take me to the red worksheet where we have the red company there. I just have an hyperlink that will take me back to my index. If I click on the black company, it will take me to the black worksheet. And again, index will take me back. So now let's see how this formula works. On the very outside, I have an if error function that wraps around this formula. And basically that says if it generates an error, just give me a blank. The next step in is the if function. And all I'm saying is if the value in column B is index, give me a blank. If not, then run my hyperlink formula. Because I don't need a hyperlink to the index function or anything beyond that when I'm on the index page. So the key here is the hyperlink function. So let's take a look and walk through that. So with the hyperlink function, what I'm doing, the first thing is the pound sign. The pound sign basically says this current workbook. Then I'm concatenating a single apostrophe that's in double quotes. It looks kind of funny there, but it's basically a single quote inside a pair of double quotes. I'm concatenating that with the sheet name and concatenating that with an exclamation point and cell A1. So if we take a look at this and look at the link location, when I take and resolve all that, it's going to give me pound sign, which means this workbook, red, which is what's in cell B2, exclamation point cell A1. So it will take me to worksheet name red cell A1. And then the other part of the hyperlink function is what's the friendly name. And the friendly name, all I did was take the worksheet name, which again is in cell B2, concatenated that with an exclamation point, and whatever is in cell B1 of that worksheet. So if we look at any of the worksheets, for example, the red company, in cell B1 is the red company on the red worksheet. And that's why the name comes up, the red company, because that is how I've constructed the friendly name. So again, with the hyperlink function, the link location is this information here, and the friendly name is that information there. And then that creates the hyperlink to our worksheets. So again, as I showed at the very beginning, if I take, let's say, the brown worksheet, and I'm just going to copy that over here. I'm going to change the name to pink, and I'll call this the pink company. If I go back to my index, you'll see after the brown company, it automatically inserted the pink company, and that hyperlink works and takes me right to that. Or if I take from the pink company, to the magenta company and I go ahead and I delete these. Notice when I go back to my index all those are gone and my worksheet list automatically updates. I can go ahead and hide this, hide this one too, and I have a nice complete and dynamic list that I can use to navigate through all the worksheets of my workbook. And that's how you can do this in Excel. And there you have it. I hope you like what you see. If you do like what you see here, please take a minute to share this post on your favorite social network. I can be found on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So I hope you enjoy this. If you'd like to see more, please feel free to stop by my website, excel-bytes.com, and I hope you subscribe. So have a great day and happy excelling.